So, um, and I interrupted you. You were about to talk about wasting syndrome. Could you talk about that? And it's one of those words that's kind of hard to say for some folks. Help us out with that. So it's, it's cachexia is the pronunciation, cachexia, it, wasting syndrome. Um, again, this is a symptom and it's part of the disease, the, the pathophysiology usually of end-stage cancer in particular, but it can also be seen in end-stage AIDS and other severe um, severe disorders where especially the immune system is, is trying really, really hard to fight back on something at the very end. And it's um, essentially breaking down muscle mass within the, the individual and feeding itself, the immune system or the cancer with sugar because amino acids in the muscle turn into sugar. So the keynote is you're going to see their face is very drawn. You can kind of see the skeleton under the skin. They're very underweight. Um, there are certain things we'll see on labs, but also they're not going to be hungry. So they're, they're going to have anorexia and they're not going to want to eat, but they have to eat because the whole point is that they're wasting. Um, so with that, this is another situation where we're going to want to stimulate the appetite um, and THC is a big part of that. Um, they may or may not be nauseous. So the same recommendations for nausea may or may not apply, um, but you really want to increase the appetite. Best way to do that is THC or again, Delta-8 THC. Um, and if, if they're cachexic, but not nauseous, high oral doses, um, but also inhaling as much as they need to. And again, you can consider rectal suppositories in this situation to um, bypass first pass metabolism in the liver and distribute it to the other tissues, um, especially with that delta-8, so that the liver isn't going to alter the molecules. Um, but whatever way you can get it in for them at very high doses is appropriate. Um, so beta caryophyllin and limonene are also, because of the um, anti-nausea effects and the immune modulatory effects, would be what I would recommend um, terpene profile-wise. Um, and if the person has cancer, you're in dicey terrain already. If they're cachexic, um, it's often a one-way street. Um, it's very difficult to pull somebody back from cachexia, um, but dietary factors here are extremely important. Um, if they do have cancer, even if they have AIDS, um, that, you know, conventional medicine will just give them insure, which naturopathic oncologists absolutely hate. Um, so I would recommend if possible, especially if they have cancer, um, you know, I don't know how much you can sort of push this within the, the retail space, but a naturopathic oncologist, if, if there's really any hope for reversing the cachexia, they need to do very specific dietary things as well. Um, so yeah, a, a naturopathic oncologist will know more um, than a conventional oncologist in that way, dietary wise. Um, don't expect that the cannabis is going to necessarily reverse it, but if we can get them to eat, um, and get enough nutrients in, then and if we can get a whole, you know, rein in whatever is causing the cachexia, um, it might be reversible, but it's, it's already, things are pretty bad at that point. Um, so it's more so just to keep them comfortable and maybe slow things. Um, so again, I said with cachexia, usually there's anorexia. Anorexia just means lack of appetite. Um, we're not talking about anorexia nervosa, the eating disorder necessarily, but I'm gonna go into that a bit here too. Um, so with anorexia, um, like I said, with cachexia, you want to stimulate the appetite. Um, anorexia happens in a lot of diseases. Again, cancer is very common. Um, so you want, you want to stimulate the appetite. THC or Delta-8 is going to be important for stimulating the appetite. If the person does have anorexia nervosa, I would avoid high amounts of THC um, because it can make them a little more panicky, a little more neurotic. Um, so in that situation, I would want them to have a higher CBD ratio, like 10 to one or five to one CBD, CBD to THC, because if it's anorexia nervosa, I want to stimulate their appetite, but I want the sedative effects of the CBD um, versus the THC. Um, also for anorexia, CBG and CBN, I, I would say are really important. CBN in particular, if it's anorexia nervosa, because it's sedative, but CBG is a big one too. Um, and then for this also oral dosing, um, absolutely. And potentially considering um, rectal suppositories here as well. If they're anorexic, so they have no appetite, but they're not nauseous, um, then you could also do, or those ways, if they're anorexic and nauseous, inhaled would be probably the best route here. Um, same terpenes, beta-caryophyllin and limonene. 
Um, and for anorexia nervosa, you know, obviously that's a complex psychiatric condition. They're going to need other support. Um, but really in that situation, if cannabis is working for them, cannabis assisted psychotherapy, if there's anybody you know who's doing that, could really be pretty life-changing or any psychedelic assisted psychotherapy could be pretty life-changing for somebody with anorexia nervosa in particular, the eating disorder. Thank you for bringing, and I know those are real, you've really helped pair a very complex situation down. And so uh, once again, in the retail space, we're never pretending to be a doctor or have the answer to anything, but it's, it's really important to be familiar with these conditions, not only so that you know what they are, but you know, so like some of the symptoms, some of the, the complications that go along with them. You know, ironically, strangely, the very thing that people have long made fun of cannabis about, you know, giving you the munchies is the very thing that has brought cannabis back to the forefront, you know, in, in 80s, in the a, um, in the 1980s with AIDS and cancer patients, you know, realizing, hey, this, this improves my, not only improves my appetite, but in the case of AIDS was allowing people to remain on their antiretroviral drugs, their, their art therapy drugs that would make them just really sick and have no appetite. Right. Um, but they found that people who are using cannabis were able to stay on that medicine and, you know, get some relief, even though we've evolved from um, maybe what people were taking at the time. But um, so, it, so it's amazing how, once again, things come back full circle. And we really appreciate you talking to us about these qualifying conditions. I know we're going to go on to some more. But um, if anybody's interested in learning more about these qualifying conditions, we encourage you to do additional research, to be familiar. It's always important in the retail space. Your, your most valuable skill is listening. And, and I think doctors would say the same thing. You know, it's, you can know from your research and from your experience, things to expect, but until you listen, um, you don't know the full story. And although you're not physicians, we really encourage you to take a minute to listen, to try to find that place in that space in your store where you can have confidential, um, confidential consults so that people aren't bearing their soul to you next to other people who are there just to shop maybe for uh, recreational or adult use stuff. And the compassion and love that you show by listening is medicine in itself.